Charles gas law, derived by the French chemist Jacques Charles, looked at the relationship between gas temperature and gas volume. And what Charles noted was that when a gas is held at constant pressure, and obviously the amount of gas in the sample is held constant as well, that the volume would vary directly with changes in the Kelvin temperature. And it's very specific that it was uh, related to the Kelvin temperature, not Celsius and not Fahrenheit. And so if you think about it in common practice, if when you heat something, most materials will expand, and the same is true of gases. As you heat a gas, those particles are going to gain more kinetic energy, and they're going to spread further apart, and so the volume will increase when you have a constant pressure. So taking two directly proportional values, like volume and temperature, when you divide directly proportionate variables, you get a constant value. And so by taking two different sets of volumes and temperature, Kelvin temperatures, for a given volume, or for a given amount of gas, you can derive what we refer to as the Charles Law equation, which is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. It's the ratio of the initial volume and temperature equal to the ratio of the final volume and temperature. Uh, and again, the main thing to keep in mind here is that temperature must be in Kelvin. And if you look at the equation and think about the different temperature scales you could use, um, standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Well, we run into a very big problem if we keep our temperature in Celsius because it's quite possible for gases to be at zero degrees Celsius. Yet if you plug in a zero for a temperature, you're going to get an undefined value. In the Kelvin scale, remember that the zero point of the Kelvin scale is absolute zero. And first of all, matter has never been to absolute zero. It's still a theoretical value. Um, but even at that, most materials will have liquefied or solidified um, by the time they get that close to absolute zero. So the main thing with Charles' law, other than you know, working with this specific equation and rearranging it properly is make sure that your temperatures are in Kelvin before you substitute. If we take a look at this example, the volume of a gas is measured to be 4.03 liters at 25 degrees Celsius, and the question is what would the volume of the gas be at standard temperature? So in looking at what's given, we're given volume and we're given temperature. There's no mention of any pressure though. So that would point us towards using the Charles Law equation. So we start with V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Rearranging to solve for V2, because we're asked what would the volume be, we would get V1 T2 over T1. And be careful as you substitute, note that unlike Boyle's Law where uh, the ones, the P1 and the V1, were together in the numerator, here your volume and your temperature are not for the same um, initial or final set of conditions. You have initial volume times final Kelvin temperature divided by the initial Kelvin temperature. Substituting in 4.03 liters for volume, 25 degrees Celsius uh, is your initial temperature which is going to go in the denominator. Converting that to Kelvin, you get 298 Kelvin uh, and standard temperature is defined as being 0 degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin, so that goes in your numerator. Kelvin's cancel, and your volume has three significant figures, so our answer will end up having three significant figures as well. Final answer, 3.69 liters. We take a look at another example. The volume of gas is measured to be 4.03 cubic decimeters at 25 degrees Celsius. If the volume were increased to 8 cubic decimeters, what would the final temperature be? Once again, we're given volumes, right? Cubed length units are valid units of volume. And we're given a temperature, again, no mention of pressure, so we're going to use the Charles Law equation. This time we're solving for T2, so in rearranging, again, just be cautious when you're substituting in your volumes, make sure you're putting them in the proper places. Your final volume is 8 cubic decimeters, your initial volume, which goes in the denominator, 4.03 cubic decimeters, and your temperature, your starting temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, which in Kelvin would be 298 decimeters cubed cancel, and our final answer would come out to be 592 Kelvin. 
And once again, with these gas law problems, Boyle's, Charles, Gay-Lussac's law, where you have only two variables uh, working in conjunction with one another, before you do the calculation, do a quick estimation. We know that volume and temperature are directly related. So if from start to finish the volume is increasing, we would expect the temperature to increase as well. And if we look at our Kelvin equivalents, we see it started at 298 Kelvin and it went to 592 Kelvin. So indeed it did increase. Typically when working with temperatures or solving for temperatures, if a temperature is given originally in Celsius, you should report the final answer in Celsius as well. So taking the 592 Kelvin, converting back to Celsius requires us to subtract 273. And when we do that, we come up with a final answer of 319 degrees Celsius.